Well, thank you. My name is Dennis Plant. I'm the fire chief for the town of Berwick. And I'd like to take this opportunity before we do our virtual walkthrough. Unfortunately, we have to handle it this way right now because of the virus. Um, but in any case, I'd like to thank the residents of the town of Berwick and the Board of Selectmen and the building committee for all their effort and time and support and fundraising to build the new uh, facility which is updated and will be for 40, 50 years down the road. And uh, at that point, I would just like to say I'm standing in front of the main entrance of the new fire station. Um, the road coming into the new entrance is the road that the Borough PD used to use, and it's been renamed uh, Public Safety Way. So with that, uh, this is the main entrance to the new facility. Uh, we're open, uh, we're functioning, and we really appreciate the town's effort in supplying this great building. Um, just to my left right here is a site that's not completed at this point, but it will be the site of uh, Captain Joe Bond's memorial, which is being worked on right now in memory of Joel. Uh, with that, I would suggest that we take a walk around the building so that we can get a view of uh, some of the specifics uh, of, the, of the site itself. So, if you're willing, let's give it a shot. It's kind of chilly. But this area here is the Sullivan Street side of the new station. Uh, we had built a road designated just for fire apparatus to have access out onto Sullivan Street. It's one way. Um, so far, so good. It's uh, worked out well for us. We have some traffic lighting uh, that will be going out on Sullivan Street to help our emergency vehicles get out onto that portion of the road. Um, this is the Sullivan Street side of the building. We have four bays, they're all drive through, and uh, we'll walk around to the other side so I can show you uh, the Logan Street side. Now this area in here is what we call the Logan Street side. Uh, the Logan Street, the site was designed so that incoming staff could come in through Logan Street, come down the ramp, and then park in this parking area right here uh, for the staff. Um, visitors would come in through the main lobby entrance, which we just spoke about on 3 Public Safety Way. But for mutual aid companies coming in, the cover Berwick Station would be coming in uh, off from Logan Street. This side here is the uh, I refer to it as the Baroque PD side of the building. Again, we have four bays, which are drive-through. Um, we have office areas uh, to my left that you'll have a chance to see here shortly when we go inside. We have a training tower on the right-hand side, three-story. that allows us or will allow us to be doing our uh, in-house training from emergency rescues to hose advancement to anything that we need to do. We can actually do it right here in the station now. For incoming traffic that's come in Logan Street, and then the outgoing, as far as emergency vehicles, was designed for Sullivan Street. But this is the area our staff will show up in. They'll come in, they'll park, they'll go through this door. Once they come through the door, they'll take their temperature. 
That's part of our policy. Check your temperature and uh, mark it down so we'll have it for a record. Then they'll go into what we call the gear room. The gear room is where they uh, store their PPE. They'll come into the room, they'll go to their locker, they'll pick up their gear, put the gear on, then they'll enter into the bay area and get on the apparatus that's getting ready to leave. This is actually the inside of the training tower that you just looked at from the outside. Again, it's three stories. Right now, we're still moving stuff and squaring it away, but um, this is something that we've never had before, and it's uh, really important when it comes to the training of our staff. We're going to walk down to the uh, decon room. This is what we refer to as the gross decon room. If we have firefighters that go out, if we have firefighters that go out and they come back all dirty and gruddy and they, come, they can come in here and actually get in a shower, wash themselves off, clean themselves off, take the gear off. And we have washers and dryers in here. That's a big washer dryer and that's another big washer and dryer over there where we clean our own PPE right here and dry it and then put it back in service. I'm gonna go this way. We have a maintenance room where we can work on fire extinguishers, we can work on all kinds of equipment, chainsaws. Right now it's still kind of in a mess because we're just moving everything in, but that will be uh, our work area. This is an air compressor that we fill our breathing air tanks with, the tanks we wear on our backs. Actually self-contained breathing apparatus. Uh, the system is like 4,000 PSI. Uh, which say time and effort because we can fill our own bottles right here. And right now, again, we're in the process of making some shelves and some other things in here. But this was, uh, we obtained this through a grant several years ago and it's worked out well for the town and the department. We have an emergency generator out on the side that's also controlled from inside here. And as you can see, we have, as I said, drive-through bays, which makes, makes it a lot uh, easier in getting vehicles in and out. We have inside hose lines that we can fill our trucks inside or we can fill them outside with water when we get back. Um, we have a big TV screen as you can see up on the wall. There's one there and there's one on the further end. And what that does is it lists, when a call comes in, it puts it up on that screen so anybody coming in can see what we got, uh, where we're headed and uh, where we're going. So, And who's responding. We have an internal primal vent system, <clears throat> but this system actually, these pipes and hoses actually uh, go on the exhaust of the vehicles. Uh, when the vehicle starts, all the exhaust from that vehicle gets shuttled out to the outside of the building. As the truck leaves, this slides. And when you hear that noise, that releases from the truck exhaust system. And because I moved it, it came on. As you know, we run emergency medical calls. So we have a medical EMS supply room just for that. Um, as far as the Bay Area, you can see what we have for apparatus. Uh, we have a, a, an older boat that we've had for a few years. Um, 
Upstairs in the mezzanine is just basically storage at this point. Uh, and we have our radio two-way communications room on that second floor. Okay, let's take a walk in through the office area. We'll start out here in the kitchen area. This is a kitchen lounge area. Kind of a small kitchen set up. We're working out well so far because we've only been in here a couple weeks. Lounge area. We're after hours. And we also have a table uh, set up. And if you'll notice at the end of the table, we've had a chair designed for Captain Barnes. Um, his own personal chair. Now, all the lighting systems on motion sensors, so after a while they'll all go out on their own. Um, not only do we have to worry about cleaning our PPE that we wear to fire calls, we also have to worry about a lot of times cleaning our station uniforms. So there's a washer and dryer set up here so that they can also clean their, their uniforms if they need to. This room here is just a utility room. It's like the one I showed you over in the corner, only everything comes over here for this section is in here. Okay. I can't get in because the door's locked. Oh, I can. Yeah, hot water tank, fire alarm systems in here. Okay, on this side of the building, we have several different offices. This is the old IC office, um, daily officer in charge. Uh, we also have a fire prevention, um, which we've just spent uh, quite a bit of time with uh, fire prevention uh, last month uh, with, the, with the children in the schools, some of the schools. Fire prevention, we have our training here, we're our training officer uh, and our EMS coordinator, which the department, as we grow, um, I would suspect that both of those um, uh, positions are gonna end up growing. Um, but right now, remember this building was not only designed for today, but was designed for 20, 30 years down the road. So to the left-hand side right here, we'll walk through as a conference room. And the heat's on here. Ooh. Conference room yes, is. is also designed to be an emergency operating center in the event that we have a disaster or some type of major emergency where uh, different town officials and, and uh, agencies need to get together and talk about and plan what needs to be done. So it's not only a conference room, it's also an emergency operating center. This is the Department EMS Training Center. Uh, right now I think you'll set about or seat about 30 people. Uh, but we have screens up there. Uh, we also have a screen in the back on the wall for the instructor. Um, we're going to get an opportunity here on th uh, Tuesday night, tomorrow night, to uh, test its functions out and make sure everything's okay. Very nice, something we never, never really had. And now we're coming back out to the public safety way end of the building. And we're going into the main lobby again. These are the front entrance doors on Public Safety Way, public entrance. Um, right now in the lobby here, we have set up some, uh, some history of the Berwick Fire Department with uh, different appliances and tools. And we've also set up a little memorial for Captain Barnes until we can get his uh, memorial in place and set up. At some point down the road, this lobby was designed so that we could actually bring in the uh, Triumph hand tub that's part of the history of the Berwick and the town of Berwick and the fire department and that's going to be placed right here in this section of the lobby. So hopefully it will be sooner than later. And that is a chair that was uh, provided by Hussey Manufacturing uh, in remembrance of Captain Bonds. So we have a pu uh, public bathroom here. Um, and we'll walk down uh, through the other hall. This is the administrative assistance office, Kali. She's in there working. This is record storage. You can look at it if you want. It's kind of like all messed up right now, but IT room, again, it's kind of messed up. It's where all our computers, all our phone lines come into from outside. Yep. Uh, my office, assistant chief's office.
Okay, on this side of the building, which again would be the PD side, the back side, uh, we have four bunk rooms, and in each bunk room there's two bunks where the staff can sleep. As you can see, one of them's already in here. Not now, but in, in all four rooms are set up the same way. We have a woman's bathroom, and we have two men's bathrooms. I'll take a look at that again, too, I guess. This is a group bunk room, and the reason why we have a group bunk room because we have major incidents going on, snowstorms, whatever the case may be, floods, where staff have to stay at the station. This allows them the opportunity to have some place to sleep while they're here. And well, in firefighting, it's always good to keep everybody's physical fitness up. So we installed a, a physical fitness room, which isn't being used at that point, this point. So we're waiting to get training done on this, which should be done within the next couple of weeks. And then the guys will be signing a waiver, then they can start using this site. This here is firefighter decon. They can actually get into here from this location. And what it's designed to do, that will also take you out on the bay. What this is designed to do so that the guys come back and they're not all that dirty, they can come right off the truck right in here. There's a bathroom and shower. Just like there is in the other. They can do that, get a change of clothes. And they don't take any dirty items into the office or the uh, lounge area at all. Everything stays out here. So that's about it. 